Hey there, this is Seth. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get your employer identification number or EIN for short, if you just started a new US business entity. It's super simple. I know there's a lot of services out there that will charge you money to do this, but as you'll see in the next few minutes, you don't need to pay for that. It's free to do, it's not that hard. Just follow along with what I'm doing. Obviously don't fill out your information exactly as I am. I'm doing it for the business that I just started. Answer it so that it applies to you, but I'll just show you what these steps look like so we can demystify this. At the time of this recording, this is what the page looks like. I'm gonna include a link to this page beneath this video if you want to go right to it. If you're watching this far into the future, this might look a little bit different, but you just have to scroll down and find the apply now button. Click on that. So we're going to click begin application. And in my case, I just started a LLC. So I'm going to select this one. If you created a different type of entity, you would just select whichever one applies to you. And how many members are in the LLC? So in my case, this is a single member LLC. So it's just me. I'm the only owner. I control everything. So I'm just going to put one here and then please select the state or territory. This business is physically located. So mine is Michigan. So I'll put that here. So I'll select that, click continue, and then please confirm your selection. Yep, everything looks good. Go ahead and click continue. And then why is this LLC requesting an EIN? In my case, it's because I just started a new business. So go ahead, click continue. And then please tell us about the responsible party of the LLC. So this is where you would put your name or the name of whoever is uh, controlling and owning this thing. So when it gets down to the SSN or ITIN, this is social security number if you're a US citizen or individual taxpayer identification number if you're not a US citizen. So you will need to have one of these in order to get your employer identification number. So if you don't have your ITIN yet and you're not a US citizen, go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna include a link to another video that explains how to do that in case you don't have that yet or don't know how to do it. And if you're doing this on behalf of your own company, you would select I am one of the owners, members, or the managing member of this LLC. So I'm gonna select that top one and continue. And then where is the LLC physically located? So the address that you put here is the address the IRS is going to use when they send you any kind of notification, whether that's your home address or a business mailing address, or if you have a registered agent who created your LLC for you, and if you're using their address, you could put that here. In my case, I don't need to have a middleman between the IRS and me. If the IRS needs to send me something, I want them to just send it right to me. And I do have a business mailbox that I use. So I'm going to put that business mailbox address in here, not my registered agent, not my home address. Again, that's just what I'm choosing to do. You can do whatever is appropriate for you. So I'll put that in here and I'll blur it out just for my own privacy. And then do you have an address different from the above where you want your email to be sent? No, I don't. I honestly don't know if the IRS shares this information anywhere else. I don't think they do, and I don't think they send anything to the state necessarily. But uh, if there is an address that you wouldn't ever want anybody else to know, like your home address, for example, then don't put that here. Get a business mailing address and at the very least use that. So once that's all set, you click continue again. It looks like it has a better version of this address that they want to use. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And then tell us about the LLC. So the legal name of the LLC, this is going to be the exact same name that you submitted to the state or if you used a registered agent service, you would just copy and paste it exactly as it was submitted to the state. And this should be exact. So any commas, any spaces, any periods, whether they are or aren't in the version that you sent to the state, it should be exactly the same as what you put in here. So I'm gonna pull up the articles of incorporation that were submitted to the state just to make sure I have exactly what we submitted to them. And I'm gonna copy and paste that into here in all caps. And the next one down where it says trade name or doing business as. So if you have an assumed name, or a trade name or a fictitious business name, whatever you want to call it. If you've registered one of those in connection with this LLC with the state, you could put that here. I may at some point, but I don't yet at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to leave this blank. So just put that in if it's relevant to you. And then you'll put the county where the LLC is located. In this case, it's the county where my mailing address is. So I'll just put that. And then the state, it's Michigan, same thing as what I said before. And then state and territory where the articles of organization are filed. So that's Michigan for me as well. And then the start date. So I'm just going to put the month and year when I registered with the state. That was essentially when this LLC came into existence and then click continue. And then it says, tell us more about the LLC. Does your business own a highway motor vehicle with a taxable gross weight? Nope. Doesn't own any of that. Doesn't involve gambling or wagering. It doesn't need to file a form 720 and it does not sell or manufacture alcohol, tobacco, or firearms. And then do you have or do you expect to have any employees in the next 12 months? No, I do not. So this is pretty simple for me. Click continue. And then what does your business or organization do? So this is where you could select whichever one is most relevant to what you do. 
For most people in the real estate business, this would be pretty easy. You just check real estate and move on. But if your business happens to be something that isn't quite described by these options here, you can also select other. And then on the next page, you'll be prompted to explain what you mean by other. This LLC that I've started is actually not for the purpose of a real estate business. So I'm going to select other. And then on the next page, you'll see what I mean, how it asks for more details about what this business is all about. So click continue. And then it says, please choose one of the following that best describes your primary business activity. Uh, none of these really apply either. So I'm going to click other again, and I will say book publishing. And then how would you like to receive your EIN confirmation letter? So if you want to get it instantly, you can click this right here where it says receive letter online and then click continue. And then please review the information you're about to submit. If any of the information below is incorrect, you will need to start a new application. So I'm just going to make sure this all still looks correct and it looks correct to me. So I'll click submit. All right. And I've got my EIN. That was super simple. I can also click on this. In fact, I would recommend you do it and save it for your records. You can click to download your EIN confirmation letter, which I just did. And then here it is. You'll want to save this for the future because you'll need it when you want to open up a bank account or when tax time rolls around. This is basically your social security number for your business entity. So it's pretty important to hang on to. And as you just saw, that was super fast and easy and free. One other important thing you ought to know about is the beneficial ownership information report. This is something that started in 2024. And essentially, once you form a new business entity in the U.S., it starts a 90 day time clock where you have to submit this extra information to the government for whoever owns a beneficial ownership interest in whatever company you just started. So don't forget to do this, too. There's actually some pretty stiff penalties if you don't do this. So I'm going to include a link to a video that explains how to complete that next step. As you'll see, it's actually really easy to do. It's not at all but you do need to actually do it you can't just ignore this so be sure to check out that video too and get that part done as well hope that's helpful thanks for watching i wish you all the best with your new business